Hello friends, for today's video I'm going to be giving some book recommendations for if you are currently experiencing a book hangover. However, this is going to be in the style of like this, try that, so it's not just going to be generic these will get you out of a book hangover recommendations, but rather I'm going to have three books that are very, very popular, well-loved, that actually put a lot of people into a book hangover, and then give you some specific recommendations that are like these books in some fashion, and that you might discover a new book that you would love as a result. So even if you're not actually experiencing a book hangover as a result of these books over here, you might still get some book recommendations for if you like one thing, you might like the other. So the three main books that we're going to be focusing on, or the series, because in this case a couple of them are series, we have Witcher, Fourth Ring, Fourth Wing, excuse me, and Babel. I'm going to start with Fourth Wing because it's the one that uh, is all the craze right now and I definitely think has put a lot of people into a bit of a, a book hangover. They're looking for more of that, but there are specific elements of the book that I'm going to be pulling out and then giving recommendations for. So Fourth Wing, if you haven't read it yet, it is a new adult fantasy story that follows a young girl who she, a young woman, I always find it funny because she corrects someone else on that and then I'm always calling her a girl and she's like, I'm a woman. So anyway, uh, <laughs> There's a young woman who enters this war college and everybody sees her as weak. This war college does not tolerate weakness. The society doesn't tolerate weakness. And so she has to really push through a lot of obstacles that others do not. She is the underdog of the story. And the goal is to end up bonding a dragon. And then once they're able to do that, then their military careers will begin. But you're not safe even after you've bonded a dragon. And there's no guarantee that even if you get through the war college itself, that a dragon will want to bond you. There's also no guarantee that the dragons won't just dispose of you themselves because they're extremely dangerous. So... One of the books that I would highly recommend if you like a war college type of setting, if you like the fact that there are dragons in the story, and if you like the idea of the characters that maybe are butting heads as a result of one character's family causing harm to the other character's family and having those difficult things to push through and overcome, then I would highly recommend Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. I actually mentioned this in my review of, of Fourth Wing. Fireborn, it is a much more serious story. I would say it's much more emotionally impactful, and it really zeroes in on different kinds of governing bodies of different ways of ruling and what the pros and cons are of those different things and the result of a revolution and what that does to a society and what it does to the people within that society. So it's a little it's a little bit more serious than Fourth Wing, which I think does not take itself all that seriously, but I love the Aurelian cycle. I actually think right now that it is on sale. I think the price has dropped temporarily, so good timing, but anyway, so I highly recommend Fireborn. I absolutely love it. I do think that the story is not going to deliver on the uh, the detailed romantic parts the way that Fourth Wing does, but there is a romantic subplot in the story and the relationship building for the characters I think is fantastic. If you like the I don't take myself too seriously writing style and the pacing that's really, really quick and the story, the writing style is comes second to the adventurous feeling than From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I think writing style wise has a very similar feel. I think the tones feel very similar and I think they both have that new adult romance, fantasy romance feeling. Uh, From Blood and Ash follows a young woman who is very significant to her society and as a result she has been very sheltered and she has not really had the opportunity to live her life. And so now as a result, she is trying desperately to claim some form of agency within her own life. And part of that uh, comes with uh, a romantic relationship building between herself and another character. The worlds are quite different, but the style and tone of the book, I would say, are 
pretty similar. The last one that I'll recommend for this would be Serpent and the Wings of Night. Serpent and the Wings of Night for me, I actually liked quite a bit more than Fourth Wing because I liked the main character a lot more. I thought that she was much more compelling and interesting and I thought that the world and the stakes made a little more sense <laughs> than they did in Fourth Wing because Fourth Wing's like, what's the most dangerous situation we can put our characters in right now? Put them in them and even if it doesn't make sense. And Serpent and the Wings of Night, this one to me, I thought it accomplished the high stakes a lot better. We are following a woman who is a mortal and she is living among vampires. And there is the opportunity for her to gain more power and finally stop living in fear of the other vampires if she is able to win this competition, essentially. And she doesn't know who she can trust and she is put through the ringer similar to what you see the characters in Fourth Wing experience. So I think if you like the general plot and premise of what the character has to has to do, that underdog story, then Serpent in the Wings of Night will probably be very appealing to you. Now getting into Witcher, over on my side channel where I talk a lot about manga, comics, video games, I actually did a whole video dedicated to if you like Witcher, then try these books. And that was more so because a lot of people have gotten into Witcher through the video game, but I still stand by a lot of those recommendations. I'm actually gonna add a new one to that, but if you'd like to see more after watching this, then I'll have that video linked. But regardless, the one that I didn't mention there that I'll mention here would be The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. So within Witcher, the first two books are collections of short stories, and then you get the main series. And the collections of short stories, in my opinion, are actually where Sapkowski's writing shines. And The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu in my opinion, also, it's that short story feeling that shines in, in The Grace of Kings. The Grace of Kings is not made up of short stories, but it does feel like it. I haven't read any of Ken Liu's actual short stories, but it's obvious to me that he is skilled in doing that because he can zero in on a particular notable figure in politics or just some random villager. He can just zero in on somebody that you don't currently have a connection to, and then within a very short amount of time, you feel very much for this character. And if something bad happens, you're like, oh no. And it's not really related to the main character directly. It's indirectly related to them or events that are to come. But those were the parts that had me gripped the most. And so I think if you like the short story writing style that Sapkowski has, or just literally his short stories, then I would say check out The Grace of Kings. I think there's definitely some parallels between those two. Also, I have said many a time, the new release from this year, God Killer. If you like Witcher, but you wish you got more Geralt and Ciri, read God Killer because that's what that book is. It's a woman who is a God Killer. I, I call her a monster hunter and another thing because I, uh, because I think that there's so, so many similarities between her and Geralt, but she is not a monster hunter. She's a god killer. And she ends up having this journey start as a result of finding this young child who has a god bonded to her, which should be impossible. And typically our main character, the god killers are known as Vegas. She would just eliminate this god, but if she harms the god, it will harm the child as well. And the child also cares very much for this god that she's bonded to. And so they set off on this quest to see if they can figure out how they can separate these two individuals so that the god and the little girl can live their lives independent of one another. And it is great. The relationship that develops throughout the book is fantastic. I love the main character. She's so rough around the edges, similar to Geralt. The little girl's a little bit sheltered and a little oblivious and she's learning. She's having to learn so quickly because there's such a bleakness to this world and a brutality to it. And just seeing the two of them, seeing the way that our main character instantly starts to feel this protectiveness of this girl. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And then last would be First Law by Joe Abercrombie. If you like Witcher and you like Witcher's writing style and specifically it's humor within a very bleak setting, then I would definitely check out First Law. It is known for being rather meandering and plotless, but First Law by Joe Abercrombie, that trilogy that starts with the blade itself, it has a very similar tone, similar sense of humor, and the characters sometimes, uh, they, within their dialogue, there will be so much that makes them come to life. And I think that's very true of Witcher as well. Last for the main books, we have Babel. 
And I have quite a few different recommendations because there's so many things about Babbel that you could pull from to give recommendations. So I want to touch a little bit on all of those. First would be the themes, especially the theme of colonialism that you see dissected within Babbel. If you are looking for something like that, but maybe something that's a little bit more accessible, a little bit more fantastical because Babbel feels more like historical fiction, I would say check out Song of Silver, Flame Like Night. A lot of the themes were very similar. But I also think if you've ever heard of the book Shadow of the Fox, I honestly think if you combined Shadow of the Fox and you smushed it together with Babel, you would get Song of Silver Flame Like Night because the magical components of the story are really interesting and really captivating and really cool. And so I think if you were wishing there was more of that in Babel, then Song will fulfill that brilliantly. Also, of course, I mean, I probably don't have to say this, but I'll say it anyway. If you like Babel, try R. Kwong's other works. I actually a little bit had a criticism of Babel that it was a little too similar in its blueprints and its pacing and story beats to the Poppy War to a point that it actually made it a little predictable for me. But I know for some people when they go into a book, by the same author, they're like, I want more of what I got before. I just want different characters and a different setting. And that's kind of what you're gonna get. Of course, there's differences, right? I'm making it sound like they're exactly the same and they're not exactly the same. There are those differences, but there's enough that is similar that I think you will enjoy it if you had that thing I just described of like, I want more of this. Uh, I do think that if you like the dark academia feel, a lot of people who like that part of Babel really like Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Both of these are critical of institutions and uh, specifically academic settings. And there's somewhat of almost a horror feeling and a sense of dread as you discover more of who's behind and who is benefiting from what is taught at these higher academic settings. And so I think that I can see there being some parallels there. And then also the Atlas Six, we're looking at people who are desperate to learn more. They're geniuses, they're brilliant, but they also are very dark and are willing to do pretty cutthroat things to get ahead. I personally, for myself, uh, dark academia is tough because I think that there are certain themes that are present in a lot of dark academia, but then when it gets to the specifics, I think it's kind of difficult to find what you like. But while these stories are quite different from each other, I do think if you like those themes, if you like the dark academia setting, then you can try Ninth House and the Atlas Six. That's it though for some book hangover recommendations in the if you like this, try that format. If you like this style of video, let me know because I have so many other books that I could do this for and I think it'd be really fun. And I know for myself, when I read something, and I love it. I'm like, I want more of this. So maybe if you feel the same, uh, then this would be helpful to have me keep doing. So let me know. Uh, but anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope, I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.